So ladies and gentlemen, I would like to begin by welcoming the leader of the Liberal Party of Canada, the leader of Her Majesty's loyal opposition, and the next Prime Minister of Canada, Michael Ignatieff. Bravo. It's uh, always hell uh, following the best orator in the Liberal Party of Canada. Uh, I want to thank Bob for that very kind introduction. We can say we're a united party tonight, thanks in no small measure to my friend of 40 years, Bob Ray. and the remarkable contribution of another extraordinary talented member of my caucus, Dominic LeBlanc. I want to thank you all for being here tonight and for your staggering generosity. Uh, it's just, uh, you ought to see how you look from up here. It's a really wonderful, wonderful sight. And what strikes me, and you feel it in the room tonight, is this extraordinary new sense of possibility. People talk about momentum. I can feel it. You can feel it too. <laughs> we liberals know that to govern is to choose. Leadership in tough times means preserving our faith in our values, the values of the great men and women who built this party, the great men and women who Bob so eloquently evoked. You can't lead without principles, principles to guide you. Our principles are clear, and they're not just principles, they are our ruling passions. National unity, social compassion, fiscal responsibility, environmental sustainability, and leadership on the world stage. These are the principles that make us the progressive and compassionate center of Canadian politics. But Laurier, ce grand Québécois, the founder of our party, told us a century ago that a party of the centre has to be a party of reform. Le Parti libéral est un parti de réforme. Le Parti libéral est un parti de changement. Et nous sommes là pour changer notre pays. When the tectonic plates of our economy are shifting, we will be there for our people. We will not let any Canadian slip through the cracks. I'm talking about auto workers and steel workers in Ontario, about forestry workers in BC and Quebec, about engineers in the oil patch. I'm talking about Mackenzie, British Columbia, where all four sawmills have shut down and there's nearly 100% unemployment. Je parle de Fort Coulonge au Québec, où près de 400 personnes sur les 1500 habitants ont vu disparaître leur emploi dans le secteur forestier. I'm talking about 700 jobs lost at Extrata and Sudbury. 1,500 layoffs at Stelco and Hamilton, 1,200 at Chrysler and Windsor. I'm talking about 70% more people in line for EI in London and Kitchener, 60% more in Calgary, 50% in Toronto, Vancouver, and Edmonton. I'm talking also about thousands of Canadians who have lost their jobs but can't get EI after paying into the system for years. We will defend these people in opposition, my friends, and we will rescue them in government. The Prime Minister could have chosen to unite Canadians behind a vision of recovery. Instead, he chose division and discord. Make no mistake, that will be his downfall. I don't like his policies, and I don't like the way he does politics either. Right now, the Prime Minister and his people are going, they're in some basement somewhere, they're going through thousands of pages of books and articles and hundreds of hours of tape. Every word that I've ever written, every syllable that I've ever uttered, they're down there looking for gold. He's looking for that one earth-shattering quote that he thinks will win him the next election. Now, this is a full-time job, you understand, because I've written 16 books. 
And if I knew that they tied up the conservatives this much, I'd have written a few more. <laughs> the secret, the secret about Mr. Harper's economic action plan, in quotes, is that its author doesn't believe in it. More than 100,000 Canadians under the age of 25 have lost their jobs. Think about that for a moment. 100,000 young people are starting their working lives in the unemployment line. That's what Stephen Harper's Canada looks like. Hope extinguished, vision postponed. We can do better. We know what a stronger, more united Canada looks like. We know what a liberal Canada looks like. National early learning and child care for every Canadian child. Employment insurance that provides people with the benefits and the training they need no matter where they live in this country. Pay equity legislation that recognizes a human right to equal pay for work of equal value. Infrastructure investment that builds the nation instead of rewarding conservative ridings. A Canadian cap and trade system with hard caps that attacks climate change instead of passing the buck. An energy strategy that unites Canadians in every region of this country around two simple goals, to make us the most efficient users of energy in the world and the most sustainable. A greener, more competitive auto sector, which keeps jobs and product mandates in this country. A national strategy of investment in science, research and innovation, so that the jobs of tomorrow, whether it's biotech, genomics, nanotechnology, you name it, start getting created today. We need a national public broadcaster, a diffuseur public, CBC Radio-Canada, qui est dynamique et fort, qui apporte la culture, le sport, les nouvelles à toutes les régions du pays, dans les deux langues officielles. And we need a national cultural policy that respects and encourages the creators who help us to see our country as it truly is. We need secure streets and strong communities for all Canadians. And finally, and Bob Ray is going to provide it for us, a voice on the international stage that stands for peace, order, and good government and backs that commitment with action. These are the practical dreams we must offer our people. We must turn these dreams into reality. The 21st century does belong to Canada, but only if we dare, if we believe, if we lead. And the political future of our country belongs to this party, but only if we inspire, only if we listen, and only if we serve. Let me conclude tonight by telling you a little story about something that happened to be just this afternoon when I was coming down on the plane and I was going through Ottawa Airport. The young woman patting me down after the scanner said, that was fine, it was good. Uh, she said this to me. She said, Mr. Ignatieff, you did the right thing about that coalition business. Thank you, Zena, I said, for that was the name written on her nameplate. You're doing well, she said, and then she added, the Liberals are coming back. You're the party for us. You're the party of the people. Yes, Sina, I said. That is what we are trying to be, the party of the people. <laughs> people like Zena who work hard, who keep faith in themselves and in this wonderful country. I'm telling you about this chance encounter with a bright young woman because it reminds us all of something we sometimes forget, which is why we do this stuff and who we do it for. We liberals know this isn't about us. This is about Zena and people like her. This is about her hopes and dreams. This is about us being the vehicle in which those hopes and dreams are realized. This is not about me, it's not about you. It's about Zena. This is about making the country we love worthy of our hopes and our children's dreams. Thank you for listening to me.